So, hey everybody, I'm Kelly and um, the uh, head of adult services here at Cooper Siegel. Well, here is home right now, but Cooper Siegel normally. And I'm here with um, Jane Brandenstein, who's going to do our Arthritis Help is on the Way program, which I love that title because it's a very intimidating and scary kind of prognosis sometimes. So um, I'm eager to hear more about what we can do, uh, the chances, like you were saying before we started recording, the chances of getting it are fairly high. So um, it feels like something that should be kind of discussed and, and more uh, education about. So um, I'll let you take over and then um, I'll put the speaker view on and then we can chat again when you're done. Okay, thanks Kelly. Yeah. Um, so while I pull up the PowerPoint, um, let me tell you, um, I'm a retired physical therapist, um, and I spent most of my working career working with people with arthritis. Um, I found that something that as a physical therapist, I could help people with, um, and, and so I'm really glad to be able to talk with you today um, about, you know, what you and I and everyone else can do to make the best of the arthritis. So I'm here from the Arthritis Foundation and uh, something that I want you to pay attention to is that you'll see a lot of green uh, green is the go color, right? And so what we used to find um, is when we talked with people with arthritis, they would say, oh, no, I can't do that. I have arthritis. No, I can't do that. I have arthritis. And what we want people to be able to say is, yes, I can do that. I might need to edit it. I might need to change it a little bit, but yes, we want you to be able to do what you can do. So you see in the bottom of the screen, we are the champion of yes, we want to help you live your best yes. Oh, um, Jane, it doesn't look like we're sharing the screen. I can't see your screen. I can just see you. So Oh, stinko. Okay. So. <laughs> Technical difficulties. We love it. What? what do I need to do? So have you, you did um, like right at the bottom, there should be share screen. That's okay. Let's see here. That. There it is. Yeah. And you should be able to choose that <clears throat> and then share your screen. Let's see. Uh, oh, here's share down here. You can tell I'm yes. not that much of a techie. There we go, that's great. Okay, let me get this back over here. Lovely, perfect, okay, onward. Okay, so today what we're gonna talk about is just what do you need to know to take care of your arthritis? So what the heck is arthritis? Well, if we take the word apart, we've got the Arthur, and Arthur pertains to joint. And then we've got the itis, and itis pertains to inflammation. So what is arthritis? Sort of inflammation of the joint. Now, Arthur itis has a couple friends. He's got a friend, Burse itis, so some of you have had bursitis, maybe in your shoulder, maybe in your hip. Um, and he's got another friend called tendonitis. So all of those are inflammation of the soft tissues. So who gets arthritis? Well, actually it affects people of all ages we usually think of arthritis as like an older person's disease. We remember grandma had it, um, but that's not necessarily true. Arthritis affects twice as many women as men. Well, it doesn't, that just stink. 
Um, and actually many folks don't realize that there are 300,000 children with arthritis. And when I think about that, that really does stink. So the numbers tell us that more children are diagnosed with arthritis than with muscular dystrophy, cystic fibrosis, and sickle cell anemia all lumped up together. Now, what that statement really is designed to say is that not that arthritis is more important than those diseases, but if you think that there's a certain amount of money and services available for people with chronic diseases, we just want our share of the pie. So you need to know there are a hundred types of arthritis. So like Kelly, how much time do we have today? A hundred kinds. Right, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? We're not going there. <laughs> but um, some of the kinds that you might've heard of are rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis. Some people have heard of fibromyalgia. Um, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, da, 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 da. There, like I said, there are a hundred kinds and it is important that you know what kind you have. So the message here is if your joints are aching and you're stiff in the morning, then maybe it's a conversation that you want to have with your doctor. Uh, the things that we are going to talk about today, management, is pretty much the same no matter what kind of arthritis you have. But what is different is medical management, meaning if you take medicine. And that really is very different depending upon the kind of arthritis that you have. So I don't want to hear any whining that, oh yeah, it's just arthritis. You need to know what kind it is. So the most common forms that we see is rheumatoid arthritis or RA, osteoarthritis or OA, and fibromyalgia. So what I thought I'd do today is talk specifically about RA, about OA, what the differences are. And then because many of us are getting older and we're hearing things about osteoporosis, the bone disease, I thought it was worthwhile talking a minute about that. So here we go. This is a joint. Two bones come together. Now, just so you know, this is a knee joint and it's a right knee. So you can kind of put that into perspective. So there are a couple things that I want you to pay attention to. You see that blue stuff on the end of the bones? That's joint cartilage. That is the slippery end on the chicken bone. Um, what does it do? It provides some nourishment to the joint. It provides a slippery surface so that the bone, the bones can move back and forth. And when we talk about osteoarthritis, that cartilage is what gets into trouble. So what else do we have here? Well, you can see on the outside of the joint, on the boat, on the left and the right is a joint capsule. That's like a heavy duty rubber band. It keeps the stuff that ought to be inside of the joint inside and the other stuff out. The joint capsule is lined with synovium. The synovium is what produces the liquid that lubricates the joint. And when we talk about rheumatoid arthritis, the synovium is what gets into trouble. Now, before your eyes glaze over, let me tell you there is no quiz at the end of this. So what else do we have here? Well, we can see some ligaments and ligaments hold bone to bone. 
um, and many of us here, if we follow sports, about guys and girls that have damaged ligaments. So you can see where that might be in the joint. We also have tendons. And we talked about our buddy tendonitis. Tendons join muscles to bone. And then there's the muscle. So that's kind of the picture of what is going on down inside your bone. So let's talk about osteoarthritis. OA people call it. Um, people would call it the um, aging kind of arthritis. So question, Jane, how do we diagnose osteoarthritis? Well, truthfully, it's pretty much diagnosed by the information that you give the doctor. You go to the doc and you say, oh, my knee is really stiff when I get up in the morning. As I get moving, it feels a little bit better. Maybe I'm having trouble with the stairs. And the doctor kind of says, hmm, okay. And he sends you off for x-rays. And when he looks at those x-rays, he says to himself, yep, that's what I thought. I can see that the cartilage is getting, it's kind of ugly looking, it's worn out. Um, this is osteoarthritis. What joints tend to get arthritis? Well, neck, low back, hips, knees, feet. Um, the last knuckles on the fingers, some of us have a couple crooked ones. Well, the commonality here is these are the working joints. So we tend to get arthritis, osteoarthritis, because we used our joints. Well, my bias is we weren't designed to be princesses, though I think that might be nice sometimes. Um, so you get it by using your joints. What are the risk factors? Well, age is the biggest one. So as we get older, the chance is greater that we'll get osteoarthritis. Family history is another risk factor. Well, we can't choose our family, but if you think about it, if you look back in your family and you have a whole family that had like bow legs, guess what? You'll probably get bow legs. Or if you come from a knock knee family, maybe you'll get knock knees. Another, we can't really do anything about those two risk factors, but increasing weight is a risk factor and that's something that we can do about it. And this is why we talk about risk factors because if you can impact it, then you want to. You know, studies show us your knees and your hips carry 10 times your body weight every time you go up and down the stairs. So if you could reduce your weight, I'm not saying 50 pounds, I mean, like that's where I need to go. But if you could reduce five or 10 pounds, that would help your joints. So think about that one. Smoking is a risk factor, just like it is for everything else. And when I list mechanical factors, meaning, you know, this is an amazing machine that we travel around in, but none of them are perfect. So if one leg is a little bit longer than the other, then the, the alignment of your body is going to be different and it'll wear different. So management, what do we do about it? Well, some people take medicine for it. Some people don't. That is doctor stuff. And I'm not going to talk about one medicine over another. Um, but the real key is to stay active. And we'll talk more about this in a little bit. But it's kind of like the use it or lose it. So in a nutshell, that is osteoarthritis. It's also called wear and tear. And um, if there's questions about it, we'll deal with them in a minute. 
Okay, so rheumatoid arthritis. This is a whole different animal. Rheumatoid arthritis is diagnosed by looking at your blood work. There are certain factors that will be in your blood work that lead the doctors to say, oh yes, you have rheumatoid arthritis. Autoimmune inflammatory disease. What does that mean? Well, it means your immune system, and man, are we hearing a lot about it now, is our immune system is fighting this COVID. Um, there's something in the immune system that goes uh, crazy, awry is the word I use. And instead of protecting the body, the immune system attacks the body. And what happens, remember back to that picture, we have the, um, the system that's making the fluid for the joint, it goes crazy. It makes more fluid. And here we'll see people with a big boggy elbow, a big boggy knee, because the body thinks it's helping us. It's making more joint fluid. Well, thank you very much, but it really didn't do what we hoped it would do. Rheumatoid arthritis is systemic, meaning it's not just the joints that get involved, but your whole body is fighting rheumatoid arthritis. One of the complaints that people have is not just joint pains, but fatigue. They feel like they were run over by a bus because if you think about how crummy you feel when you have the flu because your body's fighting the flu. Well, when you have rheumatoid arthritis, your body's fighting rheumatoid arthritis 24 seven. So it affects the whole body. Now think about management of rheumatoid arthritis. Well, Medicine is very important in rheumatoid arthritis. There are some amazing medicines that have de been developed in the last 15, 20 years um, so that people that get rheumatoid arthritis now tend not to get all the crippling that we remember our grandmas had when they got this. So management of rheumatoid arthritis medicine wise is very, very good. And the studies tell us if you can get on the appropriate medicine within six months to a year of diagnosis, then you don't get all the crippling um, that people used to get later. But the other part about management is staying active. And I remember when I was a new physical therapist and people would come, we would see that we're diagnosed with RA and they wanted to jog and they wanted to bike ride. And we're like, are you crazy? You can't do that. Cause that was part of the no. Well, the good news is physical activity is very important for rheumatoid arthritis. And we now encourage people to do that. So RA, the second kind of arthritis that we see a lot. And then I thought, like I said, we should talk about osteoporosis. So what is osteoporosis? Well, our body makes a complete changeover about every six years to 10 years, meaning we have cells in our body that chomp up the old cells and spit them out. And we have other cells that make new ones. Well, Osteoporosis means the chompers 
get ahead of the manufacturing new ones. So that is a process um, that we can do something about. There are medicines for osteoporosis. This is something that you wanna to talk to your doctor about. But the other thing is weight bearing exercise, walking, um, swimming, cycling, encourage development of new, um, new cells. So all of the arthritis that we've talked about, it's important that you keep moving. Okay, so when we look at these two slides, this is to help you get an idea of what's going on down inside the bone. So if you look at the one on the left labeled good bone, you can see it's a lattice um, and there's space between the supporting structure, but there's a lot of bone there. On the right hand side, you can see that there's not as much supporting structure. And this is what happens in osteoporosis. So when you go to the doctor and they ask you, have you fallen? This is why they want to know. Because if you have poor bone structure, there's a better chance that you could have a fracture. Okay, so arthritis in general, what can I or you do about it? Well, first of all, like I said earlier, it's important that you get the right diagnosis. It's important to know if you have the autoimmune kind or if you have the wear and tear kind. Well, okay, I've been to the doctor and we had that conversation. Um, next thing is to get active. But you know what? When you are stiff and sore, it's not intuitive that you should exercise. Um, it's important if you're just starting out that you be realistic in setting your goals for exercise. The um, Academy of Sports Medicine are the people that set up the goals. And they tell us we should be exercising 20 to 30 minutes most days of the week, okay? So if you're just starting out, maybe that's your goal. Maybe you do 10 minutes, maybe you walk from your living room to the mailbox and back. You know, that's a good way to start out. Another good way is to think about going to a class where somebody will help you with the exercises that you want to do. Next thing is engage in your own treatment. We usually try to tell people if you are the person that has the arthritis, then it's like a bus. You are the driver of the bus. The doctor will be glad to get on your bus. As a physical therapist, I'll get on your bus. The Arthritis Foundation will get on your bus, but you need to be the driver. So you can't take your arthritis to the doctor and say, here, fix it, give it back to me when you're done. We need to work together. It's important that you know as much as you can. So where do you find information? I have a bunch of slides that'll help us with that later. Go to Kelly at the library. I bet she has books that you can look at. Um, to help you learn about arthritis. Yeah, we can definitely point people in the right direction. Yeah. Wahoo, that's <laughs> great. And then you just want to be able to not say, no, I can't do that. I have arthritis. We want you to be able to say, oh, I can do that. I just might need to change it. 
I might need to take a rest. So we want you to be champions of yes. So we talked about getting active. Why is that important? Because it helps you improve your bone strength, helps you have more endurance. It makes you sleep better. And guess what? The bottom one, everybody's constitution works better when you're active. I said the guidelines from the Academy of Sports Medicine, 30 minutes a day, five days a week, or if you're like really vigorous, you can do more intensity, less, um, less time. So that's like walking, cycling, swimming, some kind of physical activity, anything more intense than laying in bed opening your eyeball and saying, I'm awake. Um, but in addition to the cardio, we want you to lift some weights. You just lifting your arm can be the um, strengthening exercise, but we want you to add them on like twice a week, um, eight to 10 repetitions. So what can the Arthritis Foundation do for you? Well, our website is www.arthritis.org. Go there, play around on the website. There's a ton of information to help you. So I have a couple slides to show you that. Here's what our website looks like. Um, and the about arthritis tells you a lot of the things that we just talked about. Um, get involved helps you um, get um, help us maybe with fundraising, um, be a volunteer, and of course, donate. You know how that is. We all need money. So you can click on any of those and it'll take you to additional exercise or information. On that website is an arthritis resource finder that'll help you find additional information, how to get in touch with a local office, um, what's going on locally. This exercise tool is truly amazing. It's called Your Exercise Solution. So, okay, I have arthritis in my knee. What should I do? You go to your exercise solution. You tick off what joints are involved. You tick off what your current fitness level is. And it will give you a list of exercises that are safe for you, that have been blessed, so to speak, by physical therapists, nurses, doctors that work with people with arthritis. Because like I said, it's not intuitive what you want to do. And if you're already hurting, like, are you crazy? You want me to exercise? But this can help you um, decide what's good for you. There is a better living toolkit which is um, a kit with a number of pamphlets that are there to help you. There's a tracker for you to keep track of how you feel on good days. And you can get that by going on the website or calling the Arthritis Foundation. And the helpline, so this is like, there is no such thing as a dumb question. So 1-844-571-HELP, you can call that helpline and there are professionals, uh, social workers that answer that line and can help you find good information. The last thing that I want to mention today, and don't worry about reading all these words, 
is what we call the insights survey. This is a questionnaire that the Arthritis Foundation has put together. It takes you 10 or 15 minutes to fill it out. You do it online. It can act as um, a, a reminder for you how you're doing. But the other thing it does is tell the Arthritis Foundation how the people we serve are doing and what needs they have. It helps the Arthritis Foundation drive our agenda on research and services. So I would ask you to take 10 minutes, go to arthritis.org slash insights and fill that survey out because you can really, really, really help us. And Kelly, I might send you some flyers if you don't mind having them on display. No, we would be happy to do that, yes. Okay, let's see. So the final thing is we are um, always looking to help people find out what is about arthritis. The Walk for the Cure comes out every year in May. Well, you know what's going on with all these kind of activities now. Can we have a walk? Do we dare have a walk? What is going to happen this year is the Walk for the Cure is May 22nd. And what we're saying to folks is make, make a pact with yourself that you're going to do some walking on May 22nd. Walk at home, go to a track, whatever works for you. Um, but make a promise that you're going to do a little walk. We're also going to have some activities at Boyce Park, and you can find out what's going on by going to the Arthritis Foundation Facebook page. This is a good way, if you're just starting to get active, to make a commitment to yourself that maybe you're going to see if you could walk a mile, walk a half a mile, walk for 10 minutes, whatever, but join us and walk. So what are we trying to do? We find that people that are active are now saying, I don't feel like I'm alone anymore. I feel like someone is really looking out for me. And this is what the Arthritis Foundation is here for, to help you know that you have a partner to help you out. The foundation has come a long way. We've been around um, since the 20s, but we can't do it alone. We need your help. So be a champion of yes, do a little bit, start out slow, and Kelly, I think we got to the end. How about that? Woohoo! Okay, well, let's do the um, view of both of us then, and we can chat if you want to. So, stop. Yep. yeah, you can stop sharing your video, and then let's see. Stop share. Ah, oh, there you are. There you are. Okay, so let's. Um, I'm gonna change. The view, okay, gallery. Okay, here we are. Hi, um, boy, that was really, really informative. I mean, I, I have a friend. I have two friends who have fibromyalgia, and I never knew that was a kind of arthritis. So, um, yeah. so fibromyalgia is um, is an entity kind of all to its own, and you know what? The it has gotten lumped in with the arthritis because um, of the pain and stiffness. And in a nutshell, what we find out is that there is a disconnect between the brain and the symptoms. 
And it's like the volume switch on your radio. Like somebody turned the volume switch up on the pain receptors. But for years, well, you know how medical people are. If I can't see it, it must not be there. And with fibromyalgia, they couldn't find it on x-ray. They couldn't find it. So you must be nuts. And a lot of people were told that they were nuts. Yeah. And we finally, finished, that's come a long way and that people oh my getting, gosh, yes. yeah, getting the diagnosis and the help they need. Cause it's a, it's a pretty devastating experience, but um, it is. Yeah. So um, what are some of the common questions that you get? Cause I know, I mean, I have, I have arthritis. Um, and, Me too. <laughs> yeah. So I know one of my favorite um, comments uh, that people don't think, you know, like you said, it's an older person's um, issue and, I'm 47 and I've got it. And so it's not, and that's a myth that is really helpful to dispel. Right, exactly. And the fact that there is help out there, um, you know, one of the things that people seem to find helpful is to be able to talk to other people that have arthritis. Um, you know, like, um, like you said, well, you're young and you don't expect that you're going to have that kind of issue. Um, but what do you do about it? You stay active. Um, the shower, the morning hot shower is God's answer to survival. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's true for a lot of people it really kind of gets the day. Whether going you have right. arthritis or not. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> There's a great movie. I think it's called, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a great moment where he's in his, the characters in his mid forties and he's at the doctor and the doctor says, well, I think you have arthritis. And he says, arthritis, arthritis. He said, I'm too young for arthritis. Right. But, yeah. Right. But, and it can be, you know, really kind of tough pain. Um, have you, do you, um, does the arthritis foundation talk at all about, um, Oh gosh, I'm having a brain freeze, but the, the needles, when you get the needles. Um, acupuncture. Acupuncture, thanks. Because my, I've had of some friends who have had a lot of relief with acupuncture. Absolutely. And, and you know how alternative medicine, that's what acupuncture falls in that category. Because for a long time, doctors they they just considered all that stuff bogus. Yeah. Um, because arthritis itself, you don't feel the same every day. Right, right. It's very difficult to do research because we don't know if you felt lousy yesterday and you feel good today. Yeah. Is that because it's a sunny day? Mm -hmm. Is that because you had an acupuncture treatment last night? Is that because you took your medicine? Um, but I will tell you that the doctors are coming around mm -hmm. on a lot of what we call alternative medicine. Yeah, CBD right now, oil is another yeah. one right. that is getting a lot of play right now. Mm -hmm. And the, most of the physicians have taken the approach that, you know, most of those things can't hurt you. Yeah. So if you try it and it works for you, then go for it. Right. Like just so many, tell me about it. Right. Non-invasive non kind of options. Like I know it helped, yoga has helped me quite a bit. Like, oh yes, yes. But, some days it's hard because if you're in pain, you don't want to do the yoga, but it ends up to, for me, most days that does end up helping, but it's hard to get started, you know? Yeah. That's why, you know, that's why I'm a big proponent of classes mm -hmm. because if you have paid your money, you are doing you're, medication. You're going to go to class. Yeah, it's true. And, and the advantage is that there's somebody up there kind of suggesting what you should do. Right, right. And always with the caveat 
that this shouldn't hurt you. Exactly. And you're in control. Yeah. So yeah, especially I, I with yoga, right. you know, you stretch as far as you can. Right. Like I'm one of those people that's hyper mobile. Mm -hmm. So that even when I was eight months pregnant, I could touch the floor. I see. Yeah. <laughs> so like I'm I'm a crazy person in the yoga class, <laughs> but not but you know, I have my limitations too. Sure. And there's so many free things on just on YouTube. If you want, you know, like I've found like great exercise yoga for back pain. Like there's just all this really great stuff. If you don't have the money to get into a class, sometimes that's really prohibitive for people. And so there's resources. I mean, there's obviously books and so many things. So um, it sounds like though, it really hopefully can, you know, for many people can be really well managed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's great Particularly, to to you know, if you got a label of the autoimmune arthritis, whether it's rheumatoid or lupus or MS, they're kind of all linked together. And, and that was like deadly. But now there are amazing medications. The issue right now with those medications is that not everybody's insurance will cover it right but there are you know places you you hear on television if you can't afford your medication astrazeneca will help you yeah so you know, people need to speak up yeah and take advantage yeah and i think your metaphor about the bus is really really helpful you do have to drive that and and it's challenging sometimes to be your own advocate, but it's such a, an important thing. There might be a coupon for um, a medication that you can get that takes it down to five bucks. You just have to kind of go out and find I it. Look and for it. Ask for questions. Yeah. Yes. But thank you so much for doing this. This, I feel like it was a presentation that was full of a lot of information and hope, which I think is really nice because I think people hear that and they think it can be, you know, devastating and paralyzing. So this was really nice to kind of feel like there are um, tools and there's help. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And um, hopefully everyone will uh, check out the Arthritis Foundation website. And again, like um, Jane said, stop in the library and we can kind of uh, head you in the right direction. So absolutely. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks. Hey, have a good day.